What's up, guys? My name's Jonathan, this is my Canon, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Canoneer. Now, today we've got an episode where we're going to be finishing up the latest project that PCB Way and I have been working on together, the world's largest foster slug. Now, you guys requested a giant rifled foster slug to be tested out of our Canon here down in the comments a long while ago, and I finally got all the pieces in the mold in, and I'm going to show you guys that up close, and then we'll be making some of those giant foster slugs. Then eventually we'll be shooting them out of the cannon here, but before we get over to the shop and I show you guys all that stuff, if you guys haven't done so already, go ahead and drop down below and hit that subscribe button. I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna wanna keep up with all the fun stuff that we're gonna be shooting with the cannon here, including those giant foster slugs that'll be coming out in some future videos. And while you're down there, if you're maybe interested in sending us a design of your own to test out of the cannon here, all the information for the subscriber shot special will be down in the description as well. And last but not least, I'd like to take just a second to thank PCB Way, the sponsor of today's video. They were kind enough to make the giant mold for us that we're going to be using to make our foster slugs. And you guys can check them out too using my link in the description below if you're interested in using them for your next project. They've got all kinds of services like CNC, laser engraving, printed circuit boards, 3D printing, all kinds of awesome things that you guys might be able to use to bring your next project from just a design on a piece of paper to something that you can hold in your hands and sell to clients. So thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring today's video and helping us make the giant mold. And you guys be sure to check them out using my link below if you need them for your next project. And I'll meet you guys over at the shop in just a second. So first things first, now that we're over at the shop, we need to open up and unbox our mold. You can see I've already got two pieces of it there on the left. PCB also sent me this awesome little sticker here that I'm gonna stick on the side of the shop wall. As always, every package that I've ever received from PCB Way has always been securely packaged. You can see how much foam they've got around there to keep everything from getting damaged. And the last piece of our mold's actually wrapped up inside of some cellophane wrap just to keep everything safe and secure. And it's all nicely oiled up to keep it from rusting while it's being shipped. Now this is actually the third mold that PCB Way and I have completed together. Our first one was a giant mini ball style projectile that I called the T-Rex slugs. And our second one was a giant flat nosed Diabolo style pellet. So let's go ahead and pull this out of the bag and I'm gonna give you guys a close up look at how awesome their machining is. So you can see all the rifling cut in there, everything's nice and crisp. And we'll go ahead and put our mold together and see how everything fits and I'm excited to get them all put together. So there's the base plate, there's the two sides and we'll go ahead and put them on. They fit just together like that. You can see the two line up for the top there and we're gonna go ahead and put them on the bottom. That's the porthole there, you can see the base and go ahead and set them straight down over the top. I didn't really need to clamp them together. Everything fits together nice and tightly, and when it gets warmer, they're gonna seal together a little better. So now that we've got the mold together, let's go ahead and start pouring some lead and see how these slugs turn out. So this is a really easy way to melt lead as well. Just stick it in a ladle and put it on top of the stove. Now this is our shop stove, so it's not used for food, and our shop's quite well ventilated. So now that our lead's nice and melted, we're gonna go ahead and pour it in our mold and let it cool. And while that lead's cooling, I just wanted to let you guys know that my buddy Justin actually designs these molds and sends me the files. I'm not very good at 3D modeling, so I just send him the design that you guys pick, and then he'll design the projectile and fusion, turn it into a mold, and then send me the step files for PCB way to make for us. So be sure to let him know down in the comments that you appreciate his work as well. And now that our lead's cool, let's go ahead and take it out of its mold. So this projectile design needed a little bit more persuasion than usual to get released from the mold. I got the bottom open there, as you can see, pretty easily, but the sides wanted to stick together, so I started hitting them with our wooden mallet to get them to separate. And you can see they separate and they start to come apart, but the projectile itself doesn't fully release from the mold. I had to give it a couple more good whacks with our wooden mallet, and I noticed that the two sides did separate, but the projectile still wouldn't come loose. So I kept on hitting it with the wooden mallet, and you can see that the two sides of our mold had actually come apart there. And I kept hitting it with the wooden mallet, hoping that this would eventually release it. And eventually one side of the mold did break free, but the projectile was still stuck inside. And you can see I actually tried to yank it out of the mold there. That didn't work, of course. So a couple of good whacks with our wooden mallet on the back of the mold actually did release it from the mold. Now, unbeknownst to me, when the two halves of our mold weren't completely together and I was hitting it with the wooden mallet, it was messing up the rifling, something fierce. So they didn't come out very pretty, the rifling's not very attractive, and they were really hard to get out of there. So I made a couple more slugs this way, they all kind of turned out the same, they just weren't very pretty. And after a good night's sleep, I remembered that you guys suggested something that might help these release from their molds a little easier. So let's give that a shot and see if it helps. So as you guys have probably figured out, I'm not the most experienced at making molds and projectiles and things like that. So I've never smoked a mold before and I didn't even know that was a thing. 
So I went ahead and researched it a little bit, and somebody suggested a cheap citronella candle, so that's what I've got burning here. And I'm going to go ahead and hold the mold directly over the flame and let all that burning soot from the candle blacken up the mold itself. You can see it started there. And it did take a little bit of trial and error. I basically figured out that you have to hold the mold at the top part of basically the point of the flame, and that's going to give you the best blackening results when it adds soot to your mold. So I went ahead and added a bunch of soot to the inside of this mold, to the other side of the mold, and then the bottom. Now I have gone ahead and sped up this little part so you guys don't have to sit there and watch me soot the entire mold. But basically you just want to move it around entirely till you get the entire mold covered from top to bottom, all the little nooks and crannies, insides and outsides, so there's no real place for lead to stick to on the inside of the mold. So this took about 10 minutes or so. Now you guys may hear that sound in the background, that kind of droning. That's rain on the tin roof of our shop. Now you guys may have heard it start at the very beginning of this little section here where we started to soot the mold and it got really heavy here and it was over just about the time I was finished sooting the mold. But now that you can see the inside of that mold is nice and black and covered with soot, I went ahead and got the other side to match it and then I did the bottom as well so the lead won't stick anywhere on the mold hopefully. Let's go ahead and reassemble it and pour a projectile with this sooted mold and see if it'll help it not stick. Now that our lead's cool, it's time to see if we can get it out of the mold a little easier. As you see, the bottom just dropped off there, and it's time to see if we can break the sides free. Now, I did realize that last time when I was trying to make these, the two sides being apart caused the rifling to get marred up as the projectile bounced around inside. So you can see now I'm actually holding the two sides together as I'm hitting it with the wooden mallet, so I can hopefully prevent that from happening. Now, it still did take a decent amount of persuasion from our wooden mallet here to get this out of the mold safely. But with just taking, but with a combination of taking my time, holding those two sides of the mold together, and just switching it around and hitting it lightly with the hammer, I was able to eventually get one side to break loose completely, and then with a little bit more gentle tapping, I was able to get the other side to break loose as well, and our projectile was then broken entirely free from the mold, and it looked so much better. And you can see with a couple of gentle taps on the back of that mold right there, the projectile just pops free. And here's a nice close-up look at our slug. You can see the rifling still intact. The bottom ring down there looks a whole lot better, and nothing got marred up. So awesome suggestion, you guys. I appreciate it. Now, I did have to re-smoke the molds after every projectile. It wasn't really black on the inside anymore. And then I remembered that I'm working in a blacksmith shop, and I can just grab some tongs and not have to hold on to a hot lead mold with my hands with gloves on them, which still got quite hot. So here's our fully sooted and reassembled mold. Let's pour one more foster slug so I can show you guys how they look. And then we'll go ahead and clean them up and get them ready to fire out of the cannon. And we're back with a little bit of gentle persuasion to go ahead and get this foster slug out of the mold. The first side broke free pretty easy. A couple of gentle taps on the back. And there's our projectile. You can see they look a whole lot nicer. Nothing gets marred up and all the rifling's still intact. So now let's remove the sprue and see how much they weigh. So I know you guys don't like it when I use the angle grinder to remove the sprues on our projectiles. So I figured this time I'd just use some wire cutters and snip them off of there. Although I am going to have to use a sander to get the top of these completely rounded again. And our last step here is going to be to just ever so slightly hit it with the belt sander here. And we're going to remove just a little bit of layer of lead on the top there. Now I am wearing my respirator so don't worry about that. And I'm just removing the place where the sprue was attached so we get a nice smooth round surface on the top. So here's a good close up look at our foster slug. You can see some of the soot still left on it. Way more crisp, beautiful rifling lines and I'm excited to shoot these out of the cannon. And here's one of the finished foster slugs next to a 12 gauge foster slug. I think Justin nailed the design and PCB Way nailed the mold. Well guys, that was a fun one. But what do you guys think? How do you think those foster slugs are gonna work out of the cannon? And let me know if you think they're gonna fly straight, if they're gonna be spinning with the rifling or anything at all. Well, I really also have a confession to make. I didn't quite realize how big the cannon was until I saw it next to a 12 gauge slug. And that's a pretty large size difference. So that was kind of shocking to see as well. Well, thanks again for hanging out here till the end guys. I really appreciate it. My name's Jonathan, this is my cannon. If you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and hit that like button. It's really going to help us get this video out into the world of YouTube. And if you're looking forward to seeing us shoot those giant foster slugs, make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. 
My name's Jonathan, guys. This is my Cannon again, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Cannoneer.